Hey folks, Red Monster SC here, and in this video, I'm going to cover how to fracture high mass rocks as a solo operator. I'll review what mining lasers, modules, and gadgets you might need, what order of operations you should follow to get your best chance at success, and some helpful tips to use when pushing the limits of your mining ship. So stick around to learn how you can solo break big rocks and stars at SN. Before I get into the specifics, I'll give you the best advice you can get for breaking huge rocks, which doesn't require a complicated setup or a figurative black belt in mining strategy, and it's really quite simple. Mine with a friend. If you have two prospectors working in tandem, you can break any size rock you'll find in the verse, and it will be a lot less stressful. If you don't know any other players, consider joining a mining organization like the UEMC or my own organization, the Red Legion, where you can team up with other experienced mining operators and maximize your experience. Now, if you're determined to run solo, let's move along. When you're out in the field solo mining and come across a 6,000, 7,000, or even 8,000 mass rock with a great percentage of mineable materials, it can be really disappointing to leave that rock behind due to limitations with your current setup. The biggest of these behemoths can carry around 85 SCU of extractable quantanium, which could mean over 700,000 credits from a single rock assuming you're able to break it down and haul it back to the refinery. To pull that off, you need the right equipment, the right technique, some practice, and a lot of patience. This is not something I recommend you try until you're confident with your mining skills and only after you have enough credits saved up to rebuy all the modules you might lose if you blow up your ship, because you're likely to explode a lot as you practice this technique. In order to find these large mass rocks, you need to know where they're going to spawn. As of Alpha 3.17.2, asteroids in the Aaron Halo, Yellow Belt, or Lagrange points range from 4600 to 5100 mass, which you shouldn't have any difficulty breaking on your own with a prospector and your standard mining loadout. In order to find rocks in the 6000 or higher mass range, you need to be mining on a planet or moon surface because there's a much wider distribution there, ranging from between 2000 mass all the way up to about 9000 mass. This table shows which planets and moons have the best chances to spawn which materials, although there may be a variety of hotspots that could fluctuate between patches. While I'd love to give you specific advice about great places to look, it mostly boils down to getting lucky when the random number generator decides what rocks to throw at you. If you need advice about surveying in general, check out episode 2 of my mining tutorial series, which covers the basics of surveying for material in Star Citizen, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, where I publish update videos for mining gameplay changes. For mining vehicles, I recommend using a mole for its increased cargo capacity and the three separate mining lasers. You can break large mass rocks in a prospector, but you're going to have a smaller cargo capacity and more likely to fill up on a single rock, and you'll only have one laser and active module set to practice with. The mole gives you three separate lasers, each with their own modules, so you'll have more chances to practice and mess up. For lasers, modules, and gadgets, you want most of your mining equipment to focus on two key bonuses, optimal window and optimal charge rate. For mining lasers, the Lancet is my preferred choice for any application due to its huge bonus to instability, resistance, and optimal charge window. In addition, when mining quantanium, the resulting fragments are going to be much easier to manage with the reduced instability. The Helix could be used for its higher power output although it loses some of the optimal window bonuses that this strategy relies on. If you go with a helix for the first break, I'd recommend having another laser turret outfitted to minimize instability and switch to the other laser after the first break. For mining modules, the Surge is a necessity. It provides an instant 40% charge level boost regardless of rock mass, and you'll need to activate it twice to get the rock's charge level into the optimal window. The next recommended module is the Stampede, which has a 125% increase to optimal charge rates. And the third module depends on your personal preference, but I will add the caveat that I've had difficulty activating an additional active module without cancelling out the effects of the first. My recommendation would be to add a passive module instead, so that you don't have to worry about modules cancelling each other, and the Rieger C3 is my preferred passive module for its 10% increase in optimal window. You can also consider having an optimal module installed for its 75% increase in optimal charge window. Just beware that if you try and activate it at the same time as the Stampede, you'll likely lose one of the module's benefits. Instead, I'd hold the optimal module in reserve in case your charge level is about to drop out of the optimal window. 
Activating the optimum then will expand your optimal window and might let you build up that last bit of charge that you need to fracture the rock. Gadgets are new as of 3.17 and can also be included as part of your loadout for big solo breaks. I'd recommend the Wave Shift for its 25% optimal window increase, however, it has a steep 50% overcharge rate increase which could be disastrous if you accidentally overshoot your charge level on the second surge. I don't think gadgets are a requirement for the majority of cases, but they do provide some benefits and can improve your chances for the first few breaks you try. If you use a different combination of modules, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Now it's time to demo the technique I use to break large mass rocks. I'm going to quickly run through the full process first, then go back through and explain a bit more detail for each step. First, start at 100% laser power. Then, activate your surge module to heat up the rock. Maintain laser power to let the activation timer on your surge module expire, and when the charge level drops to the right point, activate the surge module again to hit the upper end of the optimal window. Confirm that you didn't overcharge, then activate your stampede module. Maintaining 100% laser power to maximize the time in the optimal window. And, if the charge level looks like it's going to drop before the rock breaks, activate the optimum module. If you've timed things well, and with a little luck, you should be able to fracture any sized rock using this method. Now let's go through each step and cover some of the nuances that will help you master this technique. Start at 100% power. It's important that you're contributing as much power as you can throughout this entire process, because that will slow the rate at which the rock cools down, giving you more time in the optimal window. You aren't going to be able to increase the charge level of the rock using just the mining laser, but you can slow its decline and give yourself a better chance to break the rock. Activate your surge module to heat up the rock. The surge module gives you an instant 40% charge level increase, regardless of rock mass, resistance, distance, or any other factors. It's important to pay attention to where the charge level reaches in relation to the upper end of the optimal window because that gap is about how much remaining charge you want to have when activating the surge again later. Maintain laser power and let the activation timer on your surge module expire. Once activated, you have to wait 30 seconds to be able to activate the surge module again. You don't want the charge level to disappear completely because you'll need some residual charge left over. Keeping your laser power at 100% ensures that the rock doesn't cool off too quickly. If the cooldown timer on your surge module is finished and you still have too much charge level remaining, then you can back off the power briefly to get it to the right level. When the charge level drops to the right point, activate the surge module again to hit the upper end of the optimal window. This is the most challenging part to get right, because it relies on precise timing. During the initial surge, there was a gap between where your charge level hit and the upper end of the optimal window. You want to have that amount of charge level remaining when you hit the second surge, so that it puts you right at the top of the optimal window, but it can be very difficult to time it right. If you have too much power remaining, you'll end up in the overcharge window, which could be an issue. And if you don't have enough charge level remaining, then you won't have enough time in the optimal window to fracture the rock. Fracturing the rock with some overcharged power is okay, however, you may find yourself losing fragments when you finish with more overcharge energy. Confirm that you didn't overcharge, then activate your Stampede module. The Stampede module increases all the charge rates by 125%. That's great when you're in the optimal charge window, but that also means that you could overcharge at 125%. For this reason, I recommend waiting to confirm you haven't surged yourself into the overcharge window before activating your Stampede module. With the module active, your optimum charge level should quickly increase, giving you the best chance to break the rock. Maintain 100% power to maximize the time in the optimal window. Similar to step one in this process, it's important to be contributing as much laser power as possible to ensure the charge level doesn't drop too quickly. You won't be able to increase the charge level on rocks over about 6,000 mass. However, you can slow down the rate at which they decrease. With the Stampede module active, you want to spend as much time as possible in the optimal window so that the rock can fracture successfully. If the charge level looks like it's going to drop before the rock breaks, activate an optimal module. This part is optional, but if you've applied your second surge too late, or maybe the charge level is dropping off too quickly, you can activate an optimal module to give yourself a wider optimal window. This gives you a sliver of extra time in the green zone, which might make the difference between fracturing the rock or having to try another surge. 
I've had issues activating a second active module, where many times it will cancel out the effects of the first module, so only activate the second module right as the charge level drops out of the optimal window. So let's recap. Start at 100% power. Use a surge module to heat up the rock. Wait out the surge cooldown timer, and activate the surge again when the charge level is right. Activate your stampede module when you confirm you're in the green. Keep your laser power maxed out and cross your fingers. If it's close to fracturing but your charge level is dropping, use an optimal module. And that's it. With a little luck and practice, you should be able to start solo breaking any sized rock in the verse. If you think this method is complicated, you're right. It requires precise timing and you're probably going to need to practice a few times before you get the timing down. In the process, you'll probably end up exploding several times and possibly losing a few fragments to overcharge energy here and there. That's why I don't recommend trying this until you've got a good amount of cash saved up. With the majority of the process covered, let's dive into some other tips that might help you along the way. If you don't fracture the rock with your second surge, you can use the residual charge level to try again, as the rock is already heated up. That will give you four chances at a second surge on each rock, although you'll need to re-outfit pretty regularly to avoid running out of modules. You don't have to let the rock cool off completely between attempts, and this can save you a lot of hassle when trying to re-outfit. You can see how many charges each module has left when you access the laser turrets, although it can be difficult to find the interaction button. Just look around the turret interface until you find the consumables panel, and the interaction button should be somewhere close. Hovering over it will show the number of charges remaining for each module. Unfortunately, the vehicle loadout manager doesn't tell you how many charges are left, so you'll need to do your best to keep track of how many have been used. If you use up all the charges on an active module, the module will actually detach itself from the ship, leaving the module slot open when you go back to re-outfit. This comes in handy if you use up four of your surge modules on a single rock and know that you won't have enough remaining charges for the next one. Just activate the module repeatedly to consume any remaining charges and let the module fall off. This is also helpful because that module with one charge remaining does go back into your inventory at the station and can get pulled again when you outfit a different laser, leaving you high and dry sometime in the future. If you're in a mole, set up multiple lasers with the Surge, Stampede, Optimum combo to give yourself the most chances at breaking a rock. If you run out of modules on the first laser turret, just switch to another turret for a fresh set of modules and another chance at a break. Once you get a bit more comfortable with the process, you could keep one Surge combo and switch the others back to your preferred loadouts. Use a package delivery marker to save locations of large deposits. If you regularly come across a group of large rocks that you aren't able to process at the same time, consider using a package delivery mission marker to keep track of the location so that you can easily return to it. This requires you to plan ahead since you will need the package delivery mission before you find the rocks, but it can be a great way to keep track of a good patch of rocks while solo mining. Lastly, mine with a friend to avoid all of this hassle. Again, as of 3.17.2, there isn't a single mineable rock in the verse that you can't break using two prospectors. With each prospector adding their laser and module bonuses to the rock, it can turn even the largest size deposits into something trivial. And there you have it, how to solo break any sized rock in the verse. Let me know in the comments what your personal record is for the largest mass rock you've broken on your own. And if you use a different combination of modules and lasers, I'd love to hear about it. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Discord, and now Patreon by following the links in the description. I'd also like to thank my Patreon members for their ongoing support of the channel. And lastly, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because the only feeling better than breaking that 8800 mass rock on your own is when you deposit it in the refinery. <laughs>